Hi everyone, my name is Anna, and I'm here to tell you about Turing Tumble. Some of you may have played Turing Tumble before and have seen what a great game it is, but I'm here to tell you how Turing Tumble is actually a computer. Now I know this doesn't look like most computers you are used to, but if we looked inside of a computer, you would see how many of the parts perform the same jobs as the parts in Turing Tumble. Now, my computer here is pretty big. I'm guessing a lot of you are used to using your laptops or even your cell phones, but the truth is all of these computers have many of the same parts that perform the same jobs on the inside. So let's take a look at the inside of a computer. There is a lot of stuff in here, and all of these parts are here to support what is under this fan. When I take the fan out, you can see what I call the real brains of the computer, the processor. Now the processor is pretty small in comparison to all of this other equipment, but the processor is what allows the computer to do all of the really smart things that we ask it to. This is the processor chip. You can see all sorts of wires coming out of the bottom. Some of these wires are here to carry information into the chip. Those are the input wires. And some of these wires are here to take information out of the chip, the output wires. When you sit down at your computer, what do you do to give the computer input? You move your mouse or you type on a keyboard. You are providing input. And this input must travel into the processor. An output would be what appears on your screen when you type. So it's pretty amazing that all of these tasks are performed by this little chip. And if you think about it, your laptops and your cell phones also have processors, and those are even smaller. So if we opened this up, and we look inside, and we zoom way in, you will see billions and billions of little switches. And those switches are connected by tiny copper wires that are about a thousand times thinner than your hair. It is pretty incredible what this little chip contains. This is also a switch like you're used to, but it cannot do smart things like your computer can. So why is that? The reason is that this switch requires mechanical energy. I have to move it with my hand to turn it on but it controls electrical energy through wires. I cannot connect the electrical energy that it controls through wires to flip another switch somewhere else. I can't connect a series of switches when I'm using different types of energy between them. I can't connect switches together. It isn't smart. But inside this processor, we have a different kind of switch. It's called a transistor. It's an electrical switch. It looks like this when it's really big. This is much bigger than any of the switches inside of our processor. Okay, so with this transistor, this electrical switch, this little wire here acts as the flipper. If I put electricity into this wire, electricity flows between these two wires. But if I don't put electricity into this wire, electricity can't flow between these two wires. So it's an electrical switch that flips electrical energy. I can connect the switches together and I can do really smart things. Now in Turing Tumble, we also have switches. This right here is a switch. I can flip it to the left or I can flip it to the right. You could also think of it as off and on. What kind of energy does it take to flip this switch? Mechanical. It takes the same kind of energy that it took to flip this light switch. I have to move it with my hand. But what kind of energy does it control? Also mechanical. If it's flipped this way and I drop a ball on it, the ball heads off that way. But if it's flipped this way and I drop a ball on it, the ball heads off that way. So this is a mechanical switch that controls mechanical energy. I can connect switches together and I can do smart things, just like you can do on your computer. With Turing Tumble, I can do things like count, add, subtract, multiply, or divide. I can do all sorts of things. In fact, if this board were big enough, it could do anything that this computer could do. But the switches inside this processor 
are so small you can't even see them. So in order for our Turing tumble to do smart things like our computer, our board would have to be about the size of Texas. Can you imagine how long it would take a marble to drop from the top of Texas to the bottom? It would take a long time. Today when you are working with Turing Tumble, you will start with some really simple challenges, but as you keep going, you will see for yourself how switches connected together can do really smart things. So enjoy building your own computers using mechanical energy to build marble-powered computers with Turing Tumble.